Hey guys, it's Brie and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, true crime. So I have quite a few of those books. Uh, if you want to know more science-y type things, I'll have two other videos up for this one that cover my forensic studies books as well as my forensic anthropology books, but these are more just true crime books. So starting off with the first one I ever got, this I believe was a birthday present, and it is the Encyclopedia of Unsolved Crimes. Uh, this just goes through pretty much anything from Black Delilah to the Anthrax murders, Bob Crane, Natalie Holloway in 2005, so it's pretty widely reaching. Oh, Jack the Ripper is in here also, which uh, I will also mention the book that I reviewed a couple weeks ago, The Five, which is about his victims. Also a very interesting read. And it just kind of goes through what do we know about these different cases. There's really well-known ones, some lesser known ones, so if you're looking for just a interesting skim through it. You don't have to read it all in order because it's like an encyclopedia. There's entries. This one's super cool. All right, and then one I read recently, I got, I want to say at my used bookstore, they had a bunch of these and they were like two dollars. And it is Death by Cannibal, Minds with an Appetite for Murder by Peter Davidson. There are photos. Not necessarily people getting eaten, but of the <laughs> killers themselves and like their houses. This is really interesting. You have obviously some better known cannibals because there are a few and then you also have some that I had never heard of. Uh, you have Gary he Heednik, financial wizard whose Philadelphia home was a dungeon of sexual slavery, torture, and diabolical feasts. Albert Fentress, mild-mannered school teacher who lured teenage boys into his secret obsessions. I remember that one. That one was creepy. John Weber, country boy who found an outlet for his sick fantasies in his sister-in-law. That one was upsetting. I remember reading that one. That one was not great. Uh, you've all heard of Barjona, Nathaniel Barjona, and then Mark Sappington. Who's the one? There's also one in here that didn't actually kill anyone. He was just planning on it. So if you're into kind of cannibal, this one actually reads really quickly. Uh, there's a little bit of repetitiveness, obviously, because they're all cannibals, but uh, it doesn't dwell too much on the psychology or anything like that. It just goes into, this is what they did, this is why they said they did it, trial. So cool, just kind of an overview of a couple of terrible people. All right. And then if you're looking to get into true crime, Anne Rule is great. Uh, all of her books just kind of suck you in. I haven't finished this one yet, but it is The Stranger Beside Me. This is her first one. It is about Ted Bundy. Uh, she writes very well. She used to be a policewoman in Seattle, I want to say, or King County, and she accidentally happened to know Ted Bundy. So she wrote this book. Uh, they worked together on a suicide hotline, so she kind of has some cool perspectives on this case. It's a very big book, but it flies by. I read 100 pages in one sitting and didn't even notice. So super fast paced. I've read a couple of her other books, or at least started them, and they're all the same pretty much. Uh, you jump right in. She's a really good storyteller. So definitely check this out. And then these next two are from the same author. I've read this one, Serial Killers, The Method and Madness of Monsters by Peter Vronsky. And then he also has a follow up, Female Serial Killers, How and Why Women Become Monsters. So uh, this one is a good, it kind of gets into the psychology, talks about a couple different serial killers and talks about why they were, the starting of it. Um, it's a little technical. The only thing I had some issues with is his rep, how he interpreted some data. Uh, one specific thing he said was that sex crime only started with the industrial revolution because people had more free time. I don't think he read the data correctly. I think it probably had more to do with reporting became more prevalent and punishment, not so much that it wasn't happening before then. So sometimes he says things where you're like, I don't think you read that quite right. So does he do a very good broad overview of serial killers, the reasons they become serial killers, mental illness, uh, different things like narcissism, sociopaths, yes. He gets into it pretty good. Uh, there's some pictures. He goes way back throughout history. This is a great overview. Sometimes though, not the best interpretation of things. So I do recommend this one. It's interesting. Just be aware of that when you're going in. This one so far is very repetitive. I'm in the beginning. It says a lot of the same things that this one did, 
but eventually it does get into why women kill over men. Uh, he does take a dig at feminists a few times, so if that's gonna bother you, maybe don't get this one. Overall, his information is very interesting, just sometimes there are some problems. Interesting. So those are five of my true crime books. I have way more on my shelves, but those are the five that I'm going over today. Let me know what your favorite true crime book is because there's so many to choose from and happy reading.